Imric, the Lord of Dragons, is a leader of the Kingdom of Kalidor and a descendant of the Phoenix King, Kalidor the Conqueror. He is able to awaken dragons from their slumber, and it's through his strength that the kingdom endures. He fights with the mighty Star Lance, a weapon forged from the heart of a fallen star. The armor of Kalidor he wears is well over 4,000 years old, and his dragon horn is made from the horn of an ancient dragon, gifted to Imric's ancestors. He has come to cleanse the old world of the orc, the Skaven, and the undead. Welcome everyone to How to Tame Your Dragon. We're playing Imric, a free lord for the High Elves, and they lead a faction called the Knights of Kalidor. He's got a few things going on for him. If you want dragons, if you like dragons, if you need a dragon in your life right now, he's going to have them in spades. So he has dragon taming. Seek out the secrets of mighty dragons or defeat them for their allegiance. He's also able to move into mountains because, again, we're using flying honey badgers who just don't care. We've got the Greater Invocation of Vol, additional bonuses for dragon units. We have the Invocation of Eldrazor, which these two are new rights, or one is one improved right and one is a new right. Improves and grants experience to dragon princes, lords, and heroes. Then it takes one less turn to recruit dragon and dragon prince units. Then, you know how in the very beginning of every campaign you get route marcher for that extra 10% of campaign movement range? Well, you get that in the very beginning for having highly angular cheekbones. It's incredible. You also get Draconic Resilience, immune to mountain and desert attrition. We have a dragon. What do we care about a bit of sun and sand? Sure, it's coarse and gets everywhere and we hate it, but that doesn't matter. Then our upkeep is down by 25% for all dragons and dragon prince units too. We begin with a sun dragon and dragon princes. So we have like in-game high tier units from the very beginning. That will make a dramatic difference. It also tells me we will probably need them. Then we've got the White Lions of Krace, and to sum it up, I'll be playing on a very hard difficulty. Now, let's jump in. Behold, Prince Himric. You have arrived at the Plain of Bones, ancient graveyard of the dragons, to honor their dead and seek the wisdom of those still roaming the world. Few relics are left. For dark magic once took hold of this place. Furthermore, the dwarfs have committed sacrilege in seeking the dragon's treasures, wantonly despoiling their remains. You must punish their gold lust and purge them from their mountain holds. But be on your guard. Other nearby Dawi will not take this lightly and may seek vengeance. There is dark, ancient power to be found in the south. Though you may think twice before meddling here, it may be necessary. For in the distant ocean, a formidable black arc of the Druki has been spotted. Its business unknown. Noble dragon prince, these are wild and untamed lands infested by greedy Dawi, twisted greenskins, and other more secretive vermin. Come what may, the Knights of Kalidor must prevail. I love his banner so much, and I need it in my life. Okay, so we're going to tame dragons. We're all about that. We have 10 turns until our next dragon encounter, because we have dragon senses. We can sense them. We know when they're coming. Very awkward whenever you're on the can. All right, let's have a look over here at Diplomacy. We do have a chapter objective issued, Flames of Rebirth. I need to occupy, loot, raise, or sack four different locations. I can do that. We shall make the dragons great the once more. Foreign powers hey, I don't need that. Let's go look over here. There's no one close by, naturally, that I could really talk to. There is Kalidor back at home. Me? We've got a non-aggression pact. I'm not over there. And mage we begin Ulfa. with who? A mage of fire magic. Let me show you what that's going to lead to. Another sun dragon at rank 22. So we need to level her up quickly. That is going to change up the entire game. And she's got a ward save of 5% for Phoenix units too. We're going to give her a new name in just a minute. I sense I'll bring her into my power. army for a bit of scouting. Here's my basic army. I've got two archers, one group of spearmen, and my other additional units. And we've got the Fortress of Varag. You know what? The Fortress of Kalidor. There we go. 
That's what it should be called. Now, we also have a unique landmark building, the Tower of the Bloody Tooth. These bleak, distant ruins contain plentiful, if somewhat tainted treasures and building materials. Just try to ignore the gnawed upon bones. 300 income, minus 15%, so like a marble quarry for all buildings. And let's see, plus one to vampiric corruption, which is unfortunate. We'll, we'll have to probably counteract that in some way. We do get a decent garrison. One Sun Dragon and two White Lions of Krace. We'll need that to defend because I have a feeling we're going to be overwhelmed a lot. So I'm going to build a colonnade for more public order. The Fortress of Kalidor. One tower, tier three. We'll take it. Now, I do not have a lot of money currently. That's okay. I need to conquer Darkhold and Ash Ridge Mountain. All right. It's time. Our very first battle. Dragon strikes. It's going to be... An amazing one. I am their doom. So we're fighting Dawi, or dwarfs, or stunties, or bearded gnomes, if you will, if you want to get them really mad. Let's go fight them and test out our units. The dwarfs might have a home here, and it's old. It's quite ancient, in fact. But the dragons came long before they did. So we have an obligation, a duty, to maintain these lands, I believe. There's a fireball from Loliana. That's how you know how the battle is going to go for the Dawi. Already, they've lost quite a few dwarves. Now they're moving way over here, away from me. My own army is quite small, but we don't need numbers. We have only quality. My dragon, Anzu. He's coming up. He's got a Fire Dragon Breath ability that's going to probably kill 10 to 20. My dragon princes. They're moving in, and I've always really liked the color palette of Kalidor. Now, we get to play Kalidor. <laughs> Look at the move into position. Let's go back to my main army. So I've got two groups of archers, one group of spearmen, my white lions of Krace, one fire mage, and naturally Imric, who we're going to look at in just a moment. We're going to be seeing a lot of him. Before I do that, though... Here is my Dragon Breath ability. Destroying so many Dawi lives. 20 kills, hey. Now here comes Imric. He's got 420 weapon strength. He's got Dragon Armor, Armor Piercing, Anti-Large Abilities, and Martial Mastery, giving him more melee attack and melee defense. Look at that over here. Plus 40 when fighting large units. 290 armor piercing damage. So, he gets to charge in. He's quite durable. That's why I don't mind using him like that. And eventually, he's going to be on the back of a dragon. There's going to be much more magic I'll be using on their formation. My archers are now attacking. My dragon and dragon princes are going to be moving in very, very soon. There's my dragon Anzu. Let's zoom out real quick, just so that we can get a better perspective on what's happening. Here comes my Dragon Princess Charge. Lances are down, and we storm right behind them. Dwarf Punting, a national pastime in Kalidor. So there's Imric and all of his Dragon Princess fighting together. I'm using that hotkey J to make them turn about from where they initially began their charge. Here comes another Fireball, I believe number three now. She's already at over 60 kills. The efficacy of Fireball is truly profound. It's going to make a dramatic change on any battle I fight. Not to mention when I get the Burning Head and other abilities. My White Lions are now charging in. They are going to take some damage, but eventually they'll make it over to those Quarrelers and destroy them. All of my Archers are focusing on one group. Now my Spearmen are moving in too. My Dragon Princes are back in. Anzu has 48 kills. And my Dragon Princes have over 20. Emric has 24. And so that's how the battle has been unfolding for the Dawi. Not one survivor will go back home to tell them of what has happened here, of what has transpired here. There's another fireball. And again, the color scheme just makes them even more cool. That is one gorgeous mage. The Dragon Princes are moving back. 40 kills. The Spearmen are finally moving in. Emric has 29 kills. Anzu, over 50 kills. I'm focusing quite a few volleys on them. Now, we have Dwarves fighting Elves so early on. Control. 
it won't be much longer until they all break. Then we'll have another battle. And what about third battle? I threw her into melee. Why not? My white lions have 40 kills. They broke that group of corlers. They have one group of corlers back there that are now leaving the battlefield. And most of them are beginning to break. Dragon Prince is 70 kills. We can see what Emric is capable of. And he's not even on his dragon yet. Not yet. Oh, when we get that dragon. And then another dragon. And after that, another one. We'll have to name every single dragon that we have. It's only right. 75 kills by our mage. That isn't bad at all. Now they have all broken. It didn't take long for them to all break. We beat them. Now we may move on to a new battle. Good job, Kalidor. We lost only 30 in that entire battle. Our numbers were fairly comparable, but it didn't matter because we had dragons. They had what? Balls close to the floor? Great for them. I'm going to take Occupy. Oh yeah, that's what we're going to do. That gave me a new landmark building. The Graves of the Dragons, a dragon graveyard. The Plain of Bones is where dragons come to die. A place of great sadness to the elves, but also one of sanctity. 300 income, plus 3 to public order, plus 3 to untainted to counteract that vampiric corruption. And our upkeep goes down by a further 10% for dragons and dragon princes too. We also get a garrison of dragon princes and a sun dragon. I told you, man. We have them in spades. We're going to pick up Route Marcher. Now we'll have plus 25% to our campaign movement range. Which, if you look at where we're at right now, that is what we need. It's vast, it's wide and open, and it takes forever to get anywhere. But we're not done looking at his character just yet. But before we do that, let's pick up our technology. There we go. Military advancements done. And now we can go back to his skill sheet. Now, there's a few abilities I want. Over here, we do have Dragon Horn. Plus 24 to melee attack. It can also cause fear. For his own unique line, we've got Kalidor Incumbent. We can recruit nobles anywhere. We get plus two to influence per turn, but we can also recruit three more nobles than whatever our cap is. We've got Vol's Armaments, plus 15% to magic resistance, plus 10% to research, and plus 15 armor to our whole army. We'll be able to research a bit faster, but more importantly, magic will not impair our army nearly as much. And we'll also have more armor, too, to negate any physical damage. We have Dragon Heart. Fire resistance up by 35%. Friendly fire will not be nearly as problematic. We also get plus 7 to melee attack and plus 5 to leadership. Then over here, astride the battlefield. Our cav will be able to move 15% faster. My dragon princes are going to fly across that battlefield, man. We'll also get a charge bonus of plus 15 for all cav units and a plus two to their recruit rank. Then, Ancient Pride. A Vigor Loss Reduction will go down by 50% for my Dragon Princes and my Dragon Units too. They'll have a plus six to melee defense and a plus 10% to their physical resistance, which means they're just gonna become more durable in combat. Ashen Fields, now here's a big one that I am looking forward to. It's what I wanna to race towards when I'm able to. Every enemy Every local enemy I have will be 20% weaker to fire damage. Undead are going to rue the day they even looked in my way. And we also get a plus 10% weapon strength increase. Then we have dedicated to Vol, plus 5 to armor, plus 5 to leadership for Dragon Prince units. And they'll be 5% cheaper, in addition to having 1% more income from all industry buildings, which is paltry, but hey, it's a side benefit. We get Blazing Lance. Attacks cause flammable effect, reducing fire resistance even more. And we also get plus 20 to our charge bonus. And finally, right over here, Dragon Pact, rank 16, Bound Spell, Piercing Bolts of Burning. With everything that I have based around fire damage, we are going to melt every single one of them. Now, we can move on. And what about you? You've got a name, Liliana. That is your name. You're currently at rank two. I'm going to upgrade your fireball and I'll tell you why. It deals a lot of damage. That's really it. That's all I need to really go over. So we have Darkhold. I'm gonna call you Dragonhold. 
No longer are you dark. You're lit up by the flames of our dragon's fire. So we shall take that. We've completed our military advancements. And I did pick up two ranger units. I need more money before I'm able to pick up even more. Return of the Prince. Okay. I'll be able to do that in time. Let's head over here to Ash Ridge Mountains. We're pretty close to it. It'll take me a bit more time to get to where I need to go, unfortunately, just due to the nature of the lands here. I do not have access to the underway, nor do I want it. Now, I'm not going to spend more money. Not on buildings, but on units. I've got my two rangers. I could probably use more archers. Archers would be nice to have. Light armor? No, those cost more. Gotta keep my gold up. For research, let's pick up Spear Wall, plus 10% to weapon strength. It's basic and quite effectual. That's what I'll take, and now we can end our turn again. Let's do that. That'll give me a few more units, and it'll allow me to make it over to Ash Ridge Mountains. Then we'll go to Mount Greyhag and lead to wherever else we need to go to counter these dwarfs, these Dawi. Master of Drake. All right. Easy. We can make it there in one turn. That's really surprising. I love it. I mean, I know I've got enhancements, I'm just not used to it. I do not want to auto-resolve, and I'll tell you why. We are outnumbered out here. It can take me time to replenish. That means I need to just head in and really reduce any casualties I could potentially get from any battle. Let's have a look over here real quick. We've also got Star Lancer in the very beginning. Plus 15% to speed, plus 10 bonus to fighting large units, plus 5% to our army's charge bonus. And we can also, again, use a nice ability. Look at that. More armor piercing weapon damage, 20% more charge speed, and a 50% charge bonus. But more importantly, we get to imbue flammable upon our foes, weakening them further to fire damage. All right. Come eat my fire themed deck, These buddy. Fools have no it's chance. time. We are not going to be very kind to a single dwarf garrison. By the way, the name for my dragon princes are the Reclaimers. They are nobles who remember what happened in the War of the Beard. They've come for vengeance. It's a patron unit named by Asti, one of my patrons who have supported the channel for quite some time now. Now, another fireball. Our cooldown is quite low. So we're only really limited by the amount of winds of power that we have. Anzu is going to be moving up, and I'll go over my formation real quick. Here comes a Dragon Breath ability. Look at that. They've been melted away. More damage to their health than kills gained, but that is fine. The archers over here on my left flank are going after their quarrelers. I've got spearmen that are protected on each flank by rangers. My white lines are on my right flank. I've got two more archers over here, too, focusing on quarrelers. And Emrek is moving in to prevent these quarrelers from being able to easily attack. We're faster than they are. We can just outrun them if we choose to. My dragon princes are back here, and they are now charging in from behind. Kalidor has come to claim a grand victory. They're already beginning to waver. They have no Thane. They have very few survivable units. Miners are not survivable. They are not going to last a very long time. There goes another fireball. And Anzu has moved in, fighting with his master, Emric. The Dragon Princes are way back there, rolling over what's left of a Quarreler group. Over here are the White Lions of Krace. They too are moving in. We've got our Sun Dragon Anzu, I'm not sure why they're not keeping my names, that are just fighting and fighting and fighting with another fireball, killing probably over 10. Let's see. We're looking at over 70 kills now. Emric is pushing in and the battle is over. It was a very simple and easy battle. Tactically, there wasn't a lot to it. I just had to kind of surround them. I spaced out all of my units and I just chased them down and it ended pretty quickly. Let's get to more important fights. We didn't lose a single unit in that battle. That might change up in the future, but for that fight, we did an incredible job. A beard weaver, gross. Someone has to ensure that the cloak of beards is maintained, lest its power over dwarfen runes slacken. I'm gonna give that to some agent I'll use on the campaign map. They'll have a 10% greater chance to succeed. That's hefty. 
All right, so we've unlocked the Invocation of Isha. I'm not going to use it right now. Instead, I'm going to upgrade Ash Ridge Mountains. Done. A homestead, more replenishment. I'll keep that too. And while I'm here, why don't we reduce any type of enemy movement? More growth would be better though. That's true. But it is a very vast area. If anyone moves into that, I don't want them to be able to move quickly. So I'll take Reaver patrols. Nor will their agents be efficient here either. Okay, Imric, you are currently at rank three. I'm gonna put a point into Dragonhorn. Or melee attack and a good fear effect too. At rank three for you, Liliana. Let's put a point into Kindle Flame. Look at that. Map wide. A weakness to fire damage. Oh man. I nearly feel bad for them. Now I could use more money. Let's take up let's see. One group of spearmen. After that, we can move on. I will not I'm pretty sure Gilbert wants to move back to Mount Greyhag. I won't have time to recruit more, so we're just going to rush over to their town and take it. That should end their entire faction. Then we can focus on a new target, or we could just build up what we have. If I get Mount Greyhag, I'll want Mount Silverspear and Crookback Mountain. It's like whenever you give a dragon a cookie, he'll want some milk. Summary execution. And by milk, I mean dwarf's blood, which is like milk to a dragon. All right. Again, we're losing public order, so there may be some manner of rebellion later. That's fine. I'll take care of it. We're ending our turn because we have a battle to fight about Greyhag. It'll probably be much more challenging. They have a actual lord for once. Okay, six turns, and then we get our first dragon encounter. Dragon and here we go. I Ooh, there is a lot of Skaven, huh? Look at that corruption shoot up. Oh, Slayers too, and a lot of Quarrelers. This battle will be much more costly for me. Let's do it. We're fighting the last of a dwarf clan. Liliana is going to greet them the only way she knows how. Here comes a fireball. I suppose your shields might help. After we watch that fireball land, we're going to look at our formation. Beautiful. So let's have a look. Anzu is now moving onto their left flank. He's on my right flank. Emric and my three spearmen are in the middle. My archers are flanking my spearmen on my left and right flank. My dragon princes are moving in, and here comes some dragon fire. Right now. There are four groups of corollers. Now these guys are going to deal a lot of damage to Anzu. It's just really the nature of having that many ranged units focus on one unit. She's now casting another spell. Let's see some more damage done to them. Look at that. Oh man, she's already had over 50 kills. Now behind my spearmen, I've got my rangers and on my right flank, I've got my white lions of Krace. Now. Let's see what we can do. Emric is going to circle around. They do have slayers. We're going to focus our archers on their slayers. Emric is going to charge in, hitting some corollers because I don't want them shooting at me too much. Anzu will come back. My dragon princes are moving in. And here comes all of their units. We don't have to fight them here. I'm much faster than they are. We could just watch them all get hit from afar. There goes our charge. There's the Horn of Kalidor, so now we cause fear and deal even more damage by landing more hits through our melee attack being increased by 24. There's my Dragon Princes in all of their majestic glory. Anzu is right behind. Now there are four groups, we're only able to engage three. Hopefully in time that is going to be all four. There we go, we're pushing into those other Quirlers. While that is going on, most of these Slayers are now dead. We're able to outrun them. But I've now since sent in my rangers to go fight what's left of them. We can use our archers on our left flank to focus on these miners. They have armor piercing, but their armor isn't going to help them very much. Liliana's fighting in melee because I want to. <laughs> I want her to. She's at 91 kills. My white lions are moving in to help out my rangers. I've got archers on my right flank that are moving away. They're going to focus on another group of Quarlers if they need to. Anzu has over 40 kills. My Dragon Princes, 44 kills. 
Emric, 31. We're finishing off one group of Corlers on my right flank. It looks like another group of Corlers have broken. Now let's go back to the big fight. Have a look over here. Those miners are done for. These over on the left, they're about to break. They have only four kills. Right in the middle is Liliana with two groups of spearmen. Those dwarfs, they have nine kills. They are outnumbered. They are outmatched. Two archers hitting a group of coralers. There's some dragons fire again. Yeah, you should probably run. The Dragon Princes now have over 90 kills. So we get to focus on their Lord. Let's go back over here real quick. These miners are surrounded. They're being hit by heavy hitting white lions and my rangers too. Who look like they're ready to wrap a bunch of Christmas presents. I didn't know about that green. <laughs> Alright then. I was hoping for only red and white, but alright. Here's your gift. A stab to the face. The Dwarf Warriors are now shattered, and we have won the battle. The battle is over. We have won. Their clan is no more. That gave me some money and a standard of discipline, too. Plus seven to leadership. Okay, I'm going to give that to, let's see here, my Rangers. 49 lost. Only 49. We killed 801. What a beginning. But it's only the beginning. Now we've got to fight much more tricky opponents like Skaven. Invocation of Eldrazor. Nice. Goodbye, clan. I want to feel bad for you. Okay, plus 200 experience per turn. For 10 turns total, wow. For lords and nobles, they'll gain 50% more experience. Armor piercing damage goes up by 25% for lords, embedded heroes, and dragon princes. The high elves would be angered with me. Well, they're way over there, I'm way over here. We also gain a plus 10 to melee attack for Lords Embedded, Heroes, and Dragon Princes too. Nice! Oh, I cannot wait for my Greater Invocation of all though. I'll be able to get a very powerful magical item. Alright, I don't like to name Mount Greyhag. I'm going to call you Mount Firestone. There we go. That feels much better. Okay, so over here, what do we need? I need more public order. I certainly do need walls. Well, upgraded walls. Who knows who's going to come after me. That would allow me to get a noble right now if I pick that up. Over here is one elven embassy giving me more influence to get better heroes later. That could be like a long-term investment, but I think I'll build it somewhere else. More money would help too. There are so many options out here. And I feel like I can't go too wrong with a lot of them. Now, getting War Lions would be handy. Having a few War Lions to go after, like, faster skirmishers would be keen. So, I'm going to see. But for now, give me more public order. I do want cheaper buildings as my income has gone down. So, instead of building that right away, let's get Rebuild Lost Splendor. Then we can worry about that. You may look okay, Emric. I'm not going to focus on my army, though... In my own personal view, I would much prefer coming down here to get Lightning Strike, Quartermaster, and Elven Healing, but that would deny me so many combat abilities. I could make him stronger. You know what? We'll do that after we get Sky Master. I want more strength for a lot of my units. Yeah. He's actually pretty strong as it is. Now Loliana could get more magic. Or what about a Flaming Sword of Ruin? Oh, or the Burning Head. Yeah, take that. Oh, we're going to deal so much fire damage. Alright, so I've got money. Money I need to spend on relatively cheap units. There. I just need a few more numbers to pad out my very low-numbered army. Now, we need a new enemy to fight. Let's see here. Does Okay. If I fight you, you only own two locations. Then later, I can go after the Red Cloud. Alright, we have a plan then. See, if I push hard early on, that should make my long-term campaign much easier. If I don't push hard now, I'm going to be caught in a dirty quagmire. Yeah, who are you? Oh, you want a non-aggression pact? 
Now that's pretty goofy. That's when you know Skaven are crapping themselves. Everywhere. Just everywhere they walk. They're pretty freaked out. I think I would be pretty freaked out too if a bunch of dragons came on my freaking doorstep and said, Hello, I'm here to spread the word of fire. Alright, so yeah, we're going to head way out over here. I do not have a lot of money left. I need to push as close as I can to them. But I also want a couple more units. All right, that'll be it. A lot of rangers. I'm going to get rid of them later. We don't need a militia camp here after one turn. I'm going to destroy that real quick. I've got more research available. Let's pick up militia training. If not now, then when. So I'll just get it now. Perfect. Okay, dragon hold. Minus four per turn. Not great at all. That extra replenishment and growth. That's pretty handy. All right. Instead, I'll grab a garrison for Ash Ridge Mountain, or mountains, and get in their turn. Yeah, I could wait. There might even be a rebellion that might burn down a town or two, but again, speed is of the essence right now. I feel this compulsive need to conquer. Might be all the red, all the, the fire. Okay. Now, I don't want people to think I'm traitorous, so I'm going to declare war on them. If they're even over here. I don't even know where they're at. They might not even be over here. Alright, let's see. I'm only assuming right now. I hope I'm right. Okay. I'm heading out there. Let's see. I'm marching in. Alright, so we'll find out very soon if they're over there or not. I've got 3,200. All right, there's one militia camp, dragon hold. I mean, you've got a freaking dragon. That's going to help out the garrison, no matter what I do. That's just going to be a huge benefit for the garrison. I think for now, I'm going to build this up. It's very cheap. Over here, let's see. More public order. You have very low public order. I could use more replenishment. We'll take that. I might as well replenish while I'm out here. And what else do we have? Right. I'm not going to use it yet. Ooh, Clan Eshin is now fighting Karakasul. The Blue Hold. I really hope they're here. If they're not here, then I've wasted my time charging out here. <laughs> and of course, I don't want to fight a high tier Skaven settlement. Oh, man. That is going to be a hefty, hefty battle. Look at what they have. It's a lot of low tier stuff, so maybe I could do it without too many issues. How many uses do you have over here? Hmm. Alright, I don't like to make reckless attacks, but sometimes you've got to. If your enemy is on their back foot, push them over. Don't stop. Don't play it safe. Attack and attack until they are no more. Sometimes you're not fully aware of how close your enemies are to capitulating until you let up and you find out, hey, they were about to go sideways. There's some dragon's fire. Now Anzu is charging in. That isn't safe to do. But I'm doing it now. 49 kills. Fortunately, their towers are not fully upgraded. They have one group of clan rats who have been spawned in. They're now fighting my rangers. And also, the white lions are coming in from behind. Loliana is going to use the burning head to completely incinerate their army. I'm not even kidding about that. It is going to be devastating. Look at that. They're all bunched up. That's why we have that one spell. So my archers are moving up. I'm going to take my time here. I'm going to take damage. That is true. My other dragon princes are heading over to the other gate. Only for now. They might draw off a few other units too. So I want to break their front gate. I want to probably climb on their walls eventually to capture a few of their towers. Here's another group of clan rats who have been spawned in. My spearmen will go hit them. And we're just waiting to hit all of these rats over here. Anzu now has 81 kills. My archers are beginning to attack. They haven't activated the tower on the right yet, but it's only about time. And here comes a burning head. Look at that. That is truly the best spell that I could get right now to kill hundreds of Skaven. Now let's have a look at her kills. 
96 kills. That was only spell number one. Oh, wait. It actually hit more. And here's more Dragon's Fire. Let's hear the front gate. We're just a wrapping and a tapping. She has over 100 kills. That was only one spell. And we're going to use more Burning Heads. So my archers are just going to unleash volley after volley. They have the numbers. They are supreme when it comes to quantity. However, we're playing <laughs> one of the most efficient and deadly factions of all of Old the One. Their numbers are meant to be low. Even low by elven standards. But we don't need very many, do we? No, we do not. There's a warlord. Warlords are dangerous. It's going to allow them to keep on hitting. I mean, no matter where you shoot, you're going to hit a freaking rat. What now? More magic is coming, you say. That is a really good idea. There's not too much else going on other than Anzu moving back in. Here comes another burning head. And some dragon's fire too. Let's have a look at Anzu's kills. 216 kills. Anzu is charging back in. I'm going to send in my spearman to go break down the front gate. She has over 300 kills. Two spells, 300 kills. The second one got more than the first. Monzu's moving back out at 224 kills. We have over 3,000 Skaven to kill. Now, I've brought up one group of rangers. I wanted them to come over here to go take another fort tower. So there they go. They're charging in. And they're going to be the ones to keep us from losing more from that one tower. I'm moving my other units away from that other fourth tower. Anzu, I did charge in at a poor location. I was trying to get him to go after the gatehouse, but instead it came down here. No idea, man. No idea. And we're about to break down that front gate. That's all that I truly want right now. 2,900 Skaven left. We're going to bring in more units over here. And I have a great idea on how I'm going to use my archers to kill more of them. But here comes another burning head. Ripping right through so many of them. I thought that would be a great way to get them away from Anzu. Liliana is not screwing around, man. There's our horn. We cause fear. Now that is beautiful. Look at that. Liliana and Imric at the helm of that charge. Actually, let's just watch that for a brief moment because that's just too cool looking. That is by far one of the coolest things I've seen in a very long time. Even she's willing to get a little bit bloody. I don't know how she's able to breathe with that around her waist, but all right. I like what it's doing, all right? <laughs> but there's Emric, a duty-bound elf. So how many kills does she have? Let's see here. Emmerich has 10. She has over 500 kills currently. What's happening over here? I'm going to let my archers climb up over here, and I'll tell you why. Because then they could easily shoot down at anyone who's left inside. That would damage or kill them off before I even have to fight them in melee. My dragon princess can come back too. That was another burning head. It bounced off a bit. Imric has 10 kills. That Warlord is still here. I had to move her back. But now she has over 700 kills. That puts us at how many left? 2,300. Anzu was nearly killed, but has 247 kills. He'll move back in later. So it's going to be one of those grinding battles. Because right now, I just have to wait a bit. You can see how many of them we've killed. That's a lot. Anzu is going to move back in to help out, maybe against weaker targets. We're still trying to break through the front gate. That's all that I need right now is to break through that front gate. There's 2,200 left. I had like 1,377. I'm at 1,340 now. I did not lose a lot. Poor Skaven. My Spearmen, they have a few kills. Those Rangers have over 100 kills. They're fighting... Well, they fought a lot of Skaven slaves. Skaven slaves are going to pad up your numbers. It's just really the nature of it all. Another burning head. 
That is one apocalyptic scenario for Skaven. I mean, it went far too. It even hit another group and bounced right through them. At least getting rid of a big buffer of their health, so they're going to lose more to my melee units. Now, here's all my archers moving in. The, the Dragon Princess did like a weird pathfinding thing. I think some were let in. Yeah, they didn't break in the gate. Some were let in because you know how the AI will open and close gates? That's what happened over here. But even though they're outnumbered and there's only some over here, they're killing these Skaven Slaves. They already have over 100 kills. My archers are going to line up at the wall and they're just going to shoot down into them. You can see how many are over here. Over the period of like two minutes or three minutes, a lot of those rats are going to be dead. Emmerich is still fighting their warlord who has yet to fully break. He has 13 kills, a very lucky number for Skaven. Emmerich and the boys, they're not messing around. Emmerich just looks like a guy who would explain all the rules of Monopoly to you twice. Just so that you could fully get what's going on. And you would say, Emric, I understand. And he's like, no, there is a formal way to do this. Here's how we're going to do it. The Reclaimers, 164 kills. That's a lot, man. Anzu is moving back in, 247 kills. Oh, you are losing. There's my dragon. That's my dragon. Oh, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. What now? Another burning head, you say? Yeah, she had enough magic for another burning head, killing more slingers. The battle is nearly over. You can see what's happened now. I have fought through here. Emric has how many kills? 79 kills. The Dragon Princes are helping out. The Spearmen are helping us hold them all back. And they are all slowly breaking. It's gradual, but it is successive, and it's about to end the entire fight. That warlord came back to fight Emric. Emric says no. Be gone, rat thought. A lot like that, yeah. That's how he says it. Emric reminds me a lot of playing Rapons. So much overwhelming power. It's crazy how the Free Lords, to me, have been my favorite ones just because of how mighty they are. Oh, man. What they're able to do. It goes to show you that really good skill design for a Lord can change up everything, even if you don't get, like, a bunch of new units or whatever. Well, we do get a bunch of dragons. That's cool. The battle's over. We've won. We've done it. That was a drawn-out and very dangerous battle, but I did it. I didn't have time to wait. Okay, I could use more replenishment, so I'm going to take that loot and occupy. It's going to cause a few issues for public order, but we were going to have that anyway. All right. Invocation of Asaurian. Cheaper buildings and more public order. For now, though, I'm going to take Invocation of Isha. I want all of that awesome, delicious replenishment. Look at that now. Okay, we are going to heal up. I'll put a point over into Sky Master. Look, if I'm about dragons, I want to ensure they're as powerful as they can be. And Liliana, you are destroying everyone. I love it so much. Let's put a point over into Fireball. Actually, you know what? We're fighting Skaven. Another point into the Burning Head. There we go. So, I can afford a few more units. Do I want to, though? Just because I can doesn't mean I need to. Which means once we end our turn, we'll come over here to go fight Sniven. Then we'll have only one more location to conquer. Nice. Okay, repair that. 360, destroy the militia camp. And we are better now. There's going to be a big rebellion, though. I don't need that money, do I? I would only save, what, four to my public order. Yeah, not a big difference. Let's end our turn. That Skaven Corruption is finally going away. A new quest, and I completed it immediately because I already have a mage in my army. The Empowered Armor of Kalidor. The Armor of Kalidor is not a single piece, but an amalgamation of several armors worn by successive heroes of Kalidor's long history. 
yet it lacks a vital piece. When Kalidor I, one of the greatest Phoenix Kings, was faced with insurmountable numbers of Dark Elf Corsairs at sea, he threw himself into the depths of the ocean to prevent himself from being captured by his baneful enemies. If even a single piece could be recovered, it could greatly empower the armor of Kalidor. Rumors abound that a fragment of Kalidor, the Conqueror's fabled armor, may have reappeared. Amric must summon a mage to perform a ritual of scrying so that more can be learned of its location. Very nice. And one chapter objective issued that has been completed. That gives me so much more money to use. The Red Cloud are now gone. Oh, that's got to be Clan Eshin. Shoot. And we also have a positive growth event here. Plus 10 to growth for all provinces. For me, that's a really good thing. All right. We did it. Now I need to complete my Greater Invocation of Ball. Plus 20 to my influence. Plus 2,000 to my gold. In an attempt to locate the rumored fragment of Kalidor, the Conqueror's armor, the mage carried out the scrying. During the ritual, however, a shockwave of fell energy suddenly manifested from the scrying pool, violently knocking him back. Gladly, his injuries were superficial, but it seems someone may already have found the fragment of Kalidor's armor, someone who wields dark powers. A more forceful ritual is needed to reach out to the fragment. A ritual of Vol. After all, it was at Vol's anvil that the Conqueror's armor was first forged. Cool. Alright, with all of that money, I can do a lot. I can't upgrade my walls here. That is fine. I'm going to take the public order. Actually, we could probably use more growth, right? We lack it completely, so we'll take that. And over here at the Plain of Bones... I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to build up my stone walls right now. And over here, I've got a militia camp. I'll turn into a rally field. My colonnade will turn into a promenade. We're going to have more public order. Nice. And while we are here, Great it is time for me to move up north. Make haste, I, saw. I know. It's dangerous. What I'm doing is quite dangerous. But they have no walls. And I want their faction destroyed. Then I can move back to the southeast and handle Clan Eshin. If I destroy Clan Eshin to the east, oh my. Oh my. We can then rebuild. Now there's going to be a rebellion. I totally get that. I might even lose that location. But what can I do? If they burn it down, I can rebuild it. If they capture it, I'll recapture it. But what's more important to me right now is that I destroy my enemy because I need to move quickly or I die. All right, here we go. Imric. It is time. Be ready for anything. The oh, I'm ready rage. for everything. Look at that army. Skaven revealed. We're looking at one wizard. And what's over here? Another wizard in addition to a third wizard. <laughs> okay, engineers, let's have at it. Nothing really unique outside of their many leaders. Let's hopefully break them quickly. She says, hello. Here's another fireball. So we have one more battle now. One more battle to destroy another Skaven army. I've got all of my archers in the middle. Emric is charging in right away. I need him to keep those slingers busy. I've got my spearmen on my left and right flanks. My ranger is reinforcing them. And my white lions on my left flank. My dragon princes and my dragon Anzu are moving into the woods for right now. They're going to move out quickly. They shouldn't be in there. They'll move way too slowly. But for now, it's fine. They've got three leaders. Here's a warlock master. These guys have 90 armor. They've spawned in one group of plastic clan rats right on top of my archers. Ooh, here comes some warp lightning. Oh, you've made Loliana very angry. Well, you did help that one elf lose some weight. Oh, man. The head just popped right off like a cork. So now my archers can focus on their main formation. That's where they took a lot of their damage. See that? They had 90. Now they're at 75. Loliana is going to move up and use a spell right in the middle of that big hulking group. Emmerich is still fighting alone. Here's some magic. He's like, hey... That's pretty warm. He's at 15 kills, and he's taking a lot of damage. But, again, that is okay. There's Anzu's Dragonfire also hitting through. 
Anzu has 157 kills. The Warlock Master has 14 kills. Loliana, how many kills do you have? More Warp Lightning. What a shame. Okay, it wasn't too critical, thankfully. She's charged in. She has 198 kills. Over here, I've got a group of Spearmen now fighting Clan Rat Spears. Now, let's check out how much damage my charge will do. We have 89 for a charge bonus. Come on, Dragon Princess. They have now encountered. All right. Only 13 kills. Here comes another spell. Now that dealt a lot more damage to my units. Here comes another Burning Head and another Warp Lightning. Just because of what they have here. I know they have one Seer. So that would be one Seer and then we've got Warlock Masters. My archers are still attacking. We've broken that one group of clan rats. Or sorry, Skaven Slaves. I thought they were clan rats. Over here on my left flank, I've got my spearmen waiting. I'm moving out a few more of my infantry. They're just going to counter many of these enemies of mine. Not everyone is charging in. I'm actually impressed. I thought they were, you know, clan rats because they held for quite a bit of time. But no, no. They were just unusually brave Skaven Slaves. Now, that's a battle for the ages, huh? You can see how awful these fights are going to be with a Skaven, because we have more than one faction to fight. My Dragon Princes are charging in again. See, they can't just kill them in one go. They're actually dealing a lot of damage to my Spearman, which is very much not a good thing. My Burning Head is ripping right through them again. I'm trying to avoid hitting my units. I have over 500 kills. Over here, I've got my Spearmen who have only 84 left. They've killed 14. They're surrounded by three groups total. Anzu has 191. My archers are still out there getting, man, dozens of kills. Emmerich is still fighting too, so we're going after one of the enemy leaders now. We need to focus on him. All right, let's kind of look at what's happening right now because there's a lot that's happening. There's some more dragon's fire right in the middle. Over here, there's two groups. One is about to break. That would be clan rat spears. The other clan rats, they're going to be hit by rangers who will be freed up to attack them. My white lions are pushing in, so they're about to break, which means we can bring them into the main part of the fight. Over here, I've got Spearmen holding off a group. The Dragon Horn has been sounded, so we have more melee attack, and we're causing fear too. We're also targeting one of the enemy Warlock Masters, who has died. My Dragon Princes are now free to charge into even more groups, hitting two simultaneously. Now they're beginning to waver. They have over 100 kills. Some might even come back, but I'll be able to focus on them as they come back. Liliana has over 500 kills. 570, actually. Ooh, she's been hit by a few attacks. There's that Warlock Master. 40 kills. I'm now sending in a few units to go hit them. There's a Fireball just to go hit their leader, that Gracier of Ruin Magic. Imric is at 890 for health, but has 48 kills. Anzu is at 254, and we're going to focus on that Warlock Master. The rest are breaking and running away. Let's see now what they can do. It isn't much. It's never too much, is it? Ooh, look at that. The Howling Warp Gale, or whatever it's called. That's actually frozen onto, I believe, twice now. But they've all broken. The battle is over. There's a few who are just wavering, but they're going to break too. And so we have won the battle. That's how many rats have been killed today. We've done it, everyone. We've won a great victory. I can't believe how well we've done. I mean, we pushed so hard. I've never moved so quickly as a faction before. Two provinces already, and we're not even, what, past turn 10? I've got to keep that pace up. I don't think I can wait for too long anywhere. No, we're not going to. I lost 254. They lost over 2,300. They had 4,000 deployed, and we beat the living crap out of them. I'll take replenishment every time. I'm going to need a lot of that where I'm going. All right. Now that I've beaten you, I've gone up in rank. I'm glad I begin with my mount. One more point into Skymaster. Look, eventually, I'm going to have a lot of dragons. That means I want them to hit like a, like a meteor. Okay. I'll put a point into the burning head again. And 
Now, we should be able to... Yep, we can. We can easily auto-resolve the rest of that fight. I did lose 100, but I'll take it. Loot and Occupy. We already have a big rebellion, so we're going to use that replenishment to heal us up. The Wolflands, we now have it. Look at that. Two provinces conquered. I'll have to go back and retake Crookback Mountain, but I can make it happen. Ooh, a Sawyer. Cheaper buildings, too. All right, let's take up Reaver patrols. Don't want to bother any foes of mine. Rank seven, nice. All right, I'll put a point into sword player. I want you to become stronger in battle now. And while we are here, Liliana, you can take evasion. Thanks to her, I've been able to win. <laughs> Thanks to her, we've been able to do so much. Next, let's upgrade the dragon hold. Look at that. It'll unlock Dragon Princes. It'll give me a lot more money for 50 income, plus 5 to Public Order, plus 5 to Untainted, minus 15% upkeep for Dragons and Dragon Princes, two groups of Dragon Princes in my garrison, and one Star Dragon. Oh, man. I'm going to collect them all. So much has Emmerich accomplished in so little time. With little resources, he's able to do so much. In time, we will clash with more dwarves, tomb kings, skaven, greenskins, and even druki. Let us look forward to each and every battle. Until then, my friends.